that's all I need to say about that. Um, I'm not familiar with the game Genie. It may have incorporated cheat search. Um, yeah, that's why I said probably other stuff. Um, and also, I don't think cheat search has an official name. I've heard it called like code search or just like other stuff, memory search. Um, so yeah, and I'm going to show you how to use cheat search in a very simple example again. Uh, so let's bring up uh, Dolphin again. Start up Melee. So I have a save state here, that's me and Dr. Mario, and I don't know if you can see because it's a little bit small, but we each have seven stocks. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to use Cheat Search to figure out what memory address holds the stock account. So uh, Dolphin has this built in, I don't think you can see the menu bar, but you just click on Tools, and you go to Cheats Manager. And here we go. Uh, go over to the Cheat Search tab. And this can be a little bit buggy sometimes. I haven't tried the latest build of Dolphin, uh, but we're going to be using this. Let me see if I can get a better view here of what we're doing. Let's see if this one's good. Yeah, I think this one works a little bit better. Okay, so we have we have a few things here. First of all, there's a create AR code button. I normally just completely ignore that. We don't need it for anything. Um, for data size, you have 8-bit, 16-bit, or 32-bit. I almost always use 32-bit because most values are stored in 32-bit. Um, in this case, I'll be using 8-bit just because I happen to know for a fact that stock is stored as an 8-bit value. Usually this doesn't happen, especially for Wii games. Um, and then here, we have two settings. We have previous value, and we have something custom that we can set ourselves. And I'll explain this uh, in a minute, actually. Um, we have seven stock, and I'm trying to figure out how to change the stock count. And so we know that the stock count is equal to seven. So I will be setting this to seven. And when I click on scan, well, actually I have to set this to equal because we know the stock count is equal to seven. When I click on scan, it essentially scans through the entirety of the GameCube's memory. And it shows me how many here, um, basically how many memory addresses uh, fit the criteria that I specified, in this case equal to 7. So every time I click on next scan, what happens is you can see that that number is dramatically increasing. What it's doing is it's going over all of these addresses that previously met my criteria, and every time I click on next scan, it's filtering them down more. So it's showing me only the ones that still equal to 7 when I click on next scan. Um, and so our goal here is to narrow it down, we're still at over 200,000, that's a lot, but our goal here is to narrow it down to just a few, to the point where we can kind of just go through them trial and error and figure out which one we're looking for. So to narrow it down more, what I can do is I can just kill myself here, and this will put my stock down to 6. And so now what I can do is, well now the value is equal to 6, so I can set this to 6, click on next scan. And look at that, there's only nine memory addresses left for us to go through. And I'm just going to try to narrow this down a little bit more, kill myself again, set it to five, equal to five. And now we're only left with two. And this is really great, because sometimes you're not so lucky and you have a whole bunch to go through, but in this case there are only two memory addresses that, um, that hold this criteria. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just write these down in notepad real quick. I can get rid of this stuff. Um, so the first one is 8045310E, and the second one is 804A13CF. And I'm just going to take a wild guess here, and I think these probably both have to do with the stock. One might have to do with the actual character's stock, and the other might have to do with uh, the graphic that it shows down here. Uh, this stock icon graphic. They're probably two separate values. So that's just my hunch on what each of these do. And so we need to figure out which one actually controls the stock. 
And we can do that very easily by going in and editing these values. So I'm going to cancel out of this, um, go back to our memory view, um, and let me put in the first one that we wrote down, 804531OE. Um, now this is actually 310C because it goes in multiples of 4, which is 048C, 048C. Um, and we edit these 32 bits at a time, so um, I'm just going to copy this and paste it into here. Now presumably this 5 is our stock value, and I'm just going to kill myself one more time, and we can see this update live. I'll kill myself and refresh, and you can see it went from 2, 5 to 3 and 4. So presumably this first value here is probably something like how many times I've died, and this second one is my actual stock account. So let me try changing to this to like uh, like nine or something, and I'll set this value. And look at that. You can see down here I've already had my stock count updated to nine. So let me kill myself again, and we can see it goes down to eight. And so what we've done here is we've successfully searched for and found the value that controls my stock account. Um, and I can set this to whatever I want. I can set it to like, this is 30, should be 36. Yeah, so now I have 36 stock. Um, or I can set it to zero. Let's see what happens when I set it to zero. <laughs> so that's that. Um, what we're going to do now is we are going to um, we're going to search for a value of, in that case, we know how many stocks that link has, so it was very easy to say, well, it's equal to 7, 6, or 5, but a lot of times we don't know uh, what, this, what the value is equal to. Um, for instance, say you're looking for, like, a character's velocity or something, or say you're looking for, like, just something that could be, like, an arbitrary flag or value, and you, you don't know what it is. Um, and so in our next example, we are going to write a code that um, allows you to spam character selections on the Brawl character select screen. Just scanning the chat real quick. find the code for out of shield jump um, melee uh, well, it depends on the game um, and you'd probably find that more in a character file rather than something that's hard coded um, melee might have it hard coded because it has all the action states and their possible cancels kind of like coded um, into the game's executable but it's probably something that you would modify in a character file and it's not something that I'm going to start looking for on this stream um, but anyway, like I said, we're going to write a code that um, gets rid of the character select limit in Brawl. I'll, sh I'll show you what I mean in a second. Let me just get this up. Start a Brawl. Um, there are there are some general memory maps available to Lungdart. Um, he asked if there's a resource for memory locations for this or various other games. Um, you can find some general memory maps that kind of say like this section is used for the processor's scratch memory, this section is used to load like audio, to stream audio, this section is used to load certain game files. But generally stuff can really change on a per game basis and if you want to find like memory maps then you would have to consult like whatever that game's modding community is. Um, I have a whole bunch of stuff mapped out for Melee because of the work that I did on Melee Online. We really, really need control over those memory addresses because when you're playing with two players on two separate clients, we need to keep a lot of those synchronized. Um, so I have a whole bunch of them mapped out for, for Melee, and I can share those resources at some point. So anyway, um, when, when you select a character in Brawl, um, what happens is 
your hand kind of freezes in place for a second, and you can't do anything, and so, if you want to, like, this is the fastest that I'm able to select characters, and you can see, like, every time I select a character, my hand kind of, like, freezes, and it prevents me from spamming characters, which is fun, and it also just makes, like, the characters, like, feel more clunky, because the hand, like, freezes every time I select my character. Melee, melee doesn't do that, um, and that's something I just feel like changing. So, and we did this for Project M, by the way. Um, I think this was uh, something that Standard Toaster implemented. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so, what we need to find exactly, like, this is an example where I said, we don't know what memory address we're looking for. Like, I'm just guessing that there's probably a memory value that says, like, the hand is frozen in place, or the hand is not frozen in place. So what we need to do is we need to search for like an arbitrary value that might indicate whether or not the hand is frozen in place. Um, so I'm going to, again, I'm going to load up a uh, cheat search. And I'll, I'll show you the process of uh, searching for something like this. First of all, I'm going to set to 32-bit. Uh, as I explained, most of the time we'll be using 32-bit. And since we don't know the actual value, we're not going to use this one down here, but we're going to use previous value because we don't know the value, so we can't specify like an exact thing to, to search for. And we can guess what the value might be. You know, it could be something as simple as like one or something like that, but we really don't know, so we just want to use previous value for now. So we're going to do a new scan, and this will give me like all of, essentially all of the memory addresses. Um, right now, the hand is in an unfrozen state. So I'm going to set equal to the previous value and click next scan because the hand is still in an unfrozen state. So we can presume that uh, the memory address that controls the hand freezing has not changed. And so I'm just going to click next scan a few times because the hand is still in an unfrozen state. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to induce the frozen state uh, by selecting a character of course. And then I'm going to pause the game, and since the hand is frozen, I'm going to change this to not equal to the previous value, because we changed from the unfrozen state to the frozen state, and so we're going to select not equal to previous value. So, um, let me move this aside for a second. Here's my pause button. Really quick, because the, the frozen state only lasts for, like, you know, like a second, so I need to select my character and hit pause in the emulator. So I'll select and hit pause immediately. So the emulator is paused, and right now we can presume that the hand is in its frozen state because I just selected a character. Um, so now I'm going to change this from equal to not equal because we are going from the unfrozen state to the frozen state. And now I'm going to click next scan. And you can see it got cut down by a lot. We're now at only 442 addresses. Um, and 423, yes, there is frame by frame, and we are going to be using it, in fact. Um, I think I have it set to the hotkey F10, which you can find in Dolphin's options, there's a hotkey options. So I'm going to use F10 to advance. Oh no, never mind, that unpauses it. Let me just go in and set the hotkeys real quick. I think it's in options, hotkey settings. Um, play pause, clear that, frame events, F10. Okay. Anyway continuing. So the hand is in a frozen state right now. And so I'm going to perform a couple of frame advances. And the hand is still in a frozen state. The last time we did a scan, um, the hand was in the frozen state. So these 442 values are assuming that the hand is in a frozen state. And this frame that I'm on right now, it's also in a frozen state. So I need to set this to equal to previous value because the last time I did a scan, the hand was also frozen. So I'm looking for values that are equal to the, the last thing that I scanned, which was frozen. So I'm going to click next scan, and it narrowed it down a little bit more to 315. So I'll advance a couple more frames and click next scan again, and that time it didn't narrow down at all. Next scan. And now, now it's a little bit more difficult to narrow down, as we're 
kind of homing in on the value. Um, so now I'm going to advance just a few more frames until the hand is no 